so K for chemists, of course, means potassium, the evil element, but it also, of course, means Kelvin, the absolute temperature. And because I'm interested in how materials behave at different temperatures, I've been very familiar with K. In my doctoral work, I did most of my experiments at 20 K. And so I've always had a warm feeling from Kelvin. There are all sorts of funny stories about him. There's one story that he asked a class of students, what is electricity? And one student put up his hand. And when he asked, what is it? He said, I'd forgotten. And Kelvin said, this is a tragedy. There are only two people who know what electricity is. One is God, and the other is Mr. Mackay, who has forgotten. The reason why we have this temperature scale is because zero Kelvin, absolute zero, is the coldest temperature which it is theoretically possible to go to. So it is an absolute position of zero. You cannot actually ever get quite to zero Kelvin, but you can get within a thousandth of a degree Kelvin or even lower. Before that, people chose zero for their temperature scale by somewhere that was fairly arbitrary. Well, obviously, um, on the news, they use, well, they used to use the Fahrenheit temperature scale, which is quite arcane now, although you can't say that to an American. Um, and essentially, that's based on very human scales. That's based on a measurement of the human uh, body temperature, uh, which is a slightly strange thing to use as a unit in terms of physics. Fahrenheit thought he would make zero the coldest temperature he could get, which was mixing snow and nitric concentrated nitric acid. So for him, ice melted at 32, and then he wanted to make 100 degrees the temperature of the human body, but unfortunately he got it slightly wrong, or perhaps he had a fever that day. So in fact, the normal temperature comes out at 98.4, which is not terribly convenient but then water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So when Celsius came along, uh, we came up with the centigrade scale, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It's 100 uh, steps, and the steps are taken from the freezing point of water to the boiling point of water. So we have 100 steps, and 100 being the boiling point of water. So the advantage of the degrees Kelvin is that it, there is a theoretically justified reason why you call zero, zero. Nobody can get it colder, so you can never have a negative temperature in degrees Kelvin. So this is the liquefier for helium, and the temperature that we're talking about here is one, two degrees Kelvin. And at these temperatures, superconductivity and superfluidity come in, right? So the reason that we have this here at the university is because most of our magnets that we use for things like brain imaging, and the various uh, levitation experiments that we like to do, they all use liquid helium to cool the magnets down to superfluid temperatures. Uh, as you can see, it's a fairly big piece of technology, um, but what it all comes down to is this. Do you want to do this, or will I do this? What have we got? Right, here we've got, here we've got some liquid helium. What you're cooling down on the nozzle here, right? It's slowly cooling down, quite rapidly cooling down, and then very quickly, ready, Wait for it. Here it comes, right? And this is, this is fabulous. This is so cold. You've got to come and put your hand in it. But it's a really great experience. 